All right. Three, two, one. Good evening, everybody. This is Dr. Keith with Dads for Life. I sure welcome you here to our parent Zoom meeting. We have a great guest with us here tonight. His name is Darren W. Carter, and we're going to let him come in in just a moment and tell us a little bit about what he does to help dads stay connected, but mainly is how he stays connected as a, as a dad himself. So I tell you, it's going to be an interesting uh, group tonight. We are in Australia. We're in the United Kingdom. We're in the U.S. So we're real excited about just coming together and trying to just help you out there, parents. So we have to with us tonight Darren W. Carter, and we'll be sharing his website in just a moment, and I hope that you can share a little bit. Uh, we, he can tell us a little bit more about how to navigate his website and how he brings faith and family together forever we're excited about to hear his story so welcome to straight talk with parents mr darren carter how are you i'm doing well thank you for inviting me here hope everybody is well this evening and or morning depending <laughs> on what hemisphere you're in well we appreciate you coming in uh we are harmless in this uh class we just kind of come together and talk about parents and how to strengthen the home strengthen the parents whether they be divorced dads like you and I have dealt with before or whether they be at home, uh, whether they be a blended family or whatever, just some things to help encourage uh, parents out there. Sometimes we have more than just the, what we see here in the windows now, and we, but we're periscoping it. We send it out to our followers, and then we repurpose it with others, can send it out to their followers and so forth. So really we have continued uh, success with the classes that we do. Now, I want to just tell you up front, everybody, and I'm going to introduce my co-host here, but you may hear a little lisp with me tonight, but I have a little tooth issue over here in the UK, but we're going to work through that tomorrow. I'm going to my friend's wife, who's a dentist, who happened to be the tooth had an issue at her house, so it all worked out good. But uh, So we'll get to see if I can get some settlement tomorrow in that. But I'd like to introduce my co-host, Ms. Ariel Wheeler from Australia, who's going to be using her mute button apparently a few times tonight if you get to let it But then she has a co-host. So Ariel, say hello to Darren and our guest tonight. Hi, Darren. It's great to have you here tonight. And thanks for helping us out and spreading the word of love and helping dads and families on the straight talk today. So basically, as you can see, I've got my little partner in Christ yeah. helping me out today. So it's just so great to be here, and I'm ready to get started and learn everything and share everything we know about Darren today, because Darren has an amazing message, and I just can't wait to get started and share some more love. Look at this cheeky green. All right. This is, well, this is hello, our love, how love we're talking about. Yeah, so that's the thing. That's the joy of parenting, right? We still have things to do, but we just, when we're caught, we have to still do our parenting. We never stop doing that, do we, Zyler? We never do, do we, dear? No, we never right. stop doing it. So let's move on with our guest tonight, Mr. Darren W. Carter, who is a, a co-host or a co-founder, I think. I'll let him explain all that of Cleveland Dads, but also has some other work going on. Darren, introduce us a little bit about who Darren W. Carter is. Uh, that's me, Darren W. Carter, again, <laughs> inviting me. I, um, obviously a dad. Um, I have three children in my care. I have a 20, she just turned 23 on Friday. And I have a six-year-old who will be turning seven in January. And also in our care is a 10-month-old. Wait a minute, yeah, 10-month-old. So we've kind of got the steps here taken, you know, whatever you want, we got it. So it's, it's a joyful experience. Um, and it's, you know, fatherhood is something to, I always say, you know, respect the responsibility, but it's such a joy and hard work, very much hard work. Um, but it's a joy, but um, that's me. I, I love my kids and my wife, Teresa. Um, we endeavor to do everything to train up our children, you know, correctly uh, with mistakes, obviously, but we go on. Um, but one of the big things about me is fatherhood and getting the media conception of what fatherhood is, you know, the negativity of it, the bumbling father that can't remember anything. Um, you know, if you 
if, the, if, if your wife is gone, your counterpart, then everything falls apart with the kids. Um, and I'm a part of a group called Cleveland Dads Group, which has a, is a subsidiary of a large group called City Dads. Uh, City Dads is a national organization where we have dad groups all over the country, whether it's here in Cleveland, in Columbus, whether it's Miami, Chicago, um, San Francisco, Dallas, Wisconsin, Indiana, and Annapolis. We have almost 25 to 30 uh, dads groups, which Cleveland Dads Groups is one of the ones that I helped found, um, co-organized. And what we do is we basically help uh, the modern dad navigate through life because dad fatherhood has changed. It's no longer the nine to five, come home, you know, do something, maybe a little bit with your kid and, and go back. Now we have stay at home dads, you know, a lot of part time dads and dads are getting much more involved in their child's rearing. Um, so much so sometimes, you know, that it makes not just the even, but it may overlap sometimes. And what we do is just try to show the world that we do care, we can cope and we do love our children and we want to be a part of their growth um, and their experience in life, making them a better person. So um, I love that group because you meet so many different people from so many different backgrounds, but we have one common cause, just like you, Dr. Keith. We love our children. We love being fathers. We love the act of fatherhood, the nurturing of it, the training of it. Um, and we take it seriously. Um, you're not going to find what they call a deadbeat dad within our ranks here because we take care of what we believe is our responsibility. Mm. So that's a clean dad group. And it's a great organization. It continues to grow daily. People are continuing to join. Dads are continually to come together, understand their roles a little bit better. We help new dads who kind of are in the fray. I got a baby now. What am I supposed to do? I can't change a diaper. I can't put it in a car seat. You know, so we help with those kind of things as well. Um, we have a great media outreach to where we're changing the perceptions of fatherhood in the media. Um, one of the things you're going to be uh, going to where I experienced last year was uh, Dad 2.0, which is going to be in San Diego, and I think it's the second week of February. Yes. It brings the marketing power of the dad. <laughs> You know how you had the mommy blogger per se and how they found the marketing power in that. Um, there are a lot of dad bloggers out there and there are a lot of dads who are social media savvy. So that brings brands and fatherhood together to change the scope and the landscape of what fathers are. So they do a great job of that as well. Well, I tell you, I look forward to that. That's coming up in February and you told me about it last year and I'll be able to attend this year. And just try to see what it's all about. And I'm excited about, uh, you know, the possibilities of, of what that has to offer as we work together to help uh, our one common call. So, Miss Ariel, do you have a question for Darren or would you for, want me to proceed on with this website? Let's, pre let's go on to the website. I'd love to learn a little, little bit more about Darren and how he can actually help dads. I'm really right. excited. All right, so stand by a minute. We'll uh, get that website up and running here somewhere. I have it, I promise you. There it is. Can everybody see Darren's website? Hey. Is that you, Darren? Those faces look quite familiar. Okay, well, kind of a navigate us through a little bit. If somebody went to your website, what they'd find and how it could help them. Well, I blog about my life's journey. Whatever that may entail, whether it's my faith, um, whether it's my family, how that, you know, interacts with anything fun, whether it's my dealing with um, being diagnosed with adult ADHD, anything that pertains to that, and of course, fatherhood, because that is a part of my particular journey. Um, the top post you got there says Carter's Take Two. Well, it takes two, take two, that particular post is about how my wife and I were separated. Um, we had some time to kind of get some things together and now we're back together. So, wow, that's awesome. Um, to show, you know, all is not lost. And sometimes you gotta, when you want something, you love something, you need something, you have to work for it. Um, things happen and that, you know, there's a lot of divorce dads, like we talked about before, there's a lot of dads that are separated. 
and then you start to come into blended families and those things are important for the family structure and one of the things i mentioned in that post specifically was that we 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 uh, endeavored to keep the family together no matter how we differed so we would always still do family activities so from there um you know talk to some other fathers on how they like their dad moments uh, to different um being a quote unquote stepdad, the 10 things I've kind of learned about being, I don't like to use the word stepdad, and you know, if you're a dad, you're a dad, um, but in the legal system, you're a stepdad. So I have an article in there about, you know, the 10 things I've learned about that and my journey dealing with the other father and the other family members. Um, so it, it really is a transparent um, look into my life. A lot of issues people won't, uh, say a lot of people things they will I have a post in there when I talked about suicide and how important suicide prevention is I mean I've I've attempted it twice in my life one as a young uh, adult and then actually one as an adult um, but it was the thought of family uh, and being having the responsibility of being a dad that kind of tilted that over so um, it, it looks into who I am you, for you to read my blog or to read any of my posts, you'll say, oh, okay, well, you, you'll get to know me just a little bit better. And I do that um, because I know and I believe that testimonies help. And whatever you have, the joy of something or the negativity and how you went through, it shows people that you can go through. Now that one, like that super dad one, it's, it, it just talks about the feeling of, are your child thinks you're a superhero because you can fix everything or at least they think you can <laughs> and when there comes a time when they're they're looking for you to do something and you can't um how that feels and how you deal with it and how you kind of come about that but we all kind of been there whether they were hurt or whether it was a situation um where we've tried to you know when our children were babies and they had to get their first shots you know, they're looking at you to be like, come on, what's going on? How can you, you're supposed to be helping me here, come on. And, but, you, but you can't, you have to let them go through some things. Um, that keep living, we need you is the one where I talk about my suicide attempts and how important it is, you know, to be around people, um, how important it is you are as a person. And hopefully it gives light to, um, if you see me now, uh, that's such a positive thing because you never, would have able to experience who I really am if I would have let my way go. So it's just an in-depth transparent about my life. Yes. Whatever you, that comes about. You sure got an uh, active website there, a lot going on there that people can go to. It's DarrenWCarter.com, folks. Time to take a reset moment, not a real commercial, but I'm going to stop sharing and get back to who we are and what we're doing. I am Dr. Keith with Dads for Life, and we are here each Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and right now it's 11 o'clock UK time, but that next week I'm going to be back home, so I don't know where my system will be, but we are here right now to be able to talk with Darren W. Carter with my co-host Ariel Wheeler from the Gold Coast down there, and her arms are full right now, but I understand that for sure. And I'm having a little tooth issue, but we're here tonight, you know, because we keep coming back, and we just try to encourage, enhance, and enrich lives out there of the parents, but especially those children, because if we can reach those children first, we'll have a lot more respect for their future They'll have a lot of respect for their future, but also others in their future. So, so Darren, tell us, tell us a little bit about your, your fatherhood experience that you've had. What is one or two things that really stand out to you that you'll never forget as a story where your kids and you really connected? Because Dads for Life is about that. We try to connect the parents and the kids together. What's one story that might come to mind that that you tell often the, the the best the best one so far there there are a lot of little ones here um and i will go to my daughter my daughter um was the daughter from my wife's previous marriage and you know when we got married she was five years old 
<clears throat> so as they say, there was an instant blended family. And my experience of parenting before then, zero. Wow. So I didn't, you know, even though I knew her from birth, I never had any much interaction with her, like that close interaction. So when she was five, it's now you have to be a parent. And so that was, that was a whirlwind of just inconsistencies. Um, I didn't play good cop, bad cop a lot. I should have been a good cop instead of a bad cop. Um, I only knew what my father did for me. Uh, and I was a little knucklehead. So I was, you know, I was um, punished a lot. So I thought that's what I should do to her. But that her issues were totally different. It was just a whirlwind. And, and um, teenage years, they weren't good for us. You would never find a number one dad mug in my house during her teenage years. Mm. Um, and then a lot of that, though, you know, telling her what to do. I wasn't doing myself. I wasn't being a great example of anything. I just didn't have my bearings. But it, it, over time, it just finally, it finally clicked. Um, some of the things were because ADHD. And I was dealing with that, so I understood a little bit better. Um, but some of it was just how I acted. So one day. We were home and I put her, you know, we were sitting down. I think we were eating Captain Crunch or no, I was eating Captain Crunch and she was eating Frosted Flakes. And I was shaking like a leaf because I wanted to apologize to my daughter. Um, now, I didn't talk to a group of one, well, that's not a group, but a person of one mm -hmm. and the groups of thousands and never was as nervous as I was that day about to ask her. You know, she was teenager she was a young adult she was you know you know she was strong now and I just said look I know things haven't been easy for us and I know honestly a lot of it is my fault um, and I just want to say I'm sorry I, I didn't know some things I understand now and I can't promise you it's going to be better overnight but I, I can promise you that I'm going to work harder to be a better father um, and I'm thinking, you know, some grand comeback or whatever. And she's like, okay. And we just kept on eating. <laughs> she said, I, you know, that's, that's cool. And we just kept on eating our cereal. But that right there changed our whole dynamic of our relationship. It just changed our relationship. And, you know, we, we, you know. Sometimes the smallest things take the biggest place in our heart, don't they? Yeah. 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 All it was was a simple sentence, which changed our uh, relationship for the better, greatly for the better, um, up to this point today as well. Right. Well, mm -hmm. I can tell you that, that those little things did mean a lot with, with me being a part-time dad, but I had a full-time heart, which is the title of our first book. And I tell you, I just never forget some of those small things that I did and didn't realize that little things like that would be a blessing to other people to be able to do sort of similar things to their own children, which creates memories, right? Ariel, you have a question for Darren? Yeah, I was just going to echo that sometimes through adversity, it actually teaches us things about ourselves as well as the people that we love. And through adversity, and I know that sometimes it can be quite, you know, a struggle to get through that. But that's the thing about struggle. Struggle can bring us together as well as the great times. So why can't great times and bad times bring us together? And it's great that you actually shared that story because I know that a lot of parents, and myself included, can actually relate to sometimes no matter how bad things happen or what happened to us, we know that we can always communicate. And when we communicate how we feel and, you know, what's going on, we always know that there's always going to be help there. And it's amazing to know that even though that the struggle's there, you can always reach out to people, even if it's just through a loved one. So I really appreciate you for sharing that story. And I actually don't have any questions, but... I just want to say thank you for sharing that because that really touched my heart and it reminds me of, you know, everything I've been through the last two years, you know, of you know, having birth, you know, being pregnant and then having the birth and having postnatal depression and then being where I am right now. It's just a true blessing and it makes me re remind myself of sometimes you have to go through those things in life to just to discover yourself and how important that love is. So thank you for reminding me. Wow. See, Darren? You even touch our host tonight, so there you go. You never know, do we? Well, Darren, yeah. as, as we start to wrap up, I just want you to kind of to just talk to parents for a minute and tell them 
just give them some ideas in your, your mind and heart. What you think, you know, today our, our kids are struggling. Our kids are hurting. Our, our kids need some real attention. You know, this morning um, I, I was working on some courses here in the UK and we're filming those up. And we're actually going to be finishing that up possibly tomorrow and working on a second course. So we're excited about that. So, Darren, just uh, you, you've touched on some things that are actually included in my course, which is kind of interesting. First of all, you and I met. How did we meet? Do you remember? Periscope, I believe. Did. You just were on one time and I connected with you and then you, we both disappeared for a while and we came back. But, you know, so both of us kind of realized we were doing the same work. And then you told me about the dad summit out in, in, in San Diego and because and, I missed last year. But, but um, we're going to be out there together and, and breaking bread together and learning some things together. So I'm excited about meeting you in person. There's a lot of people on Periscope that I've met, you know, through, through different venues. Like I met Jai Garcia here in the U.K. and I'm here with him, you know. I, I, think, I think Ariel's waiting for Miss Glenn and I to come that way, too. But, but tell us, just, just kind of close us out with a couple of thoughts. What do you think today the kids are needing the most? Because you see some, some, some situations with even the Cle Cleveland dads, you know, that you're working with. I mean, what, are, what is the most difficult thing do you think that we could do to connect with our kids today? Um, before I do that, the Dad Summit, just to mention, it's uh, February 9th through the 12th. And I think you can go to dad2summit.com, I think that is. Yeah, dad2summit.com and check that out. Um, I, was, I was very honored enough to speak, but last year I uh, was talking about how being an African-American dad, how that is of raising your child, the, the challenges of how that raised, you know, raising children being uh, a black dad in this day and age. Um, but you hit on the, the, the most important thing, time. As, as you know, crazy as it is, we can't, life get, we can't let life get in the way of what we do with our children. And it's so easy because we, we have to work, most of us. <clears throat> um, you know, unless you're a stay-at-home, you have to work. And then when you have to work, you got to come home, you got to do dinner, you got to check homework. You do all these things, next thing you know, it's time for a child to go to bed and you haven't spent anything. Um, my my 10-month-old, <clears throat> I look for this every day. We, he learn, he's learning how to crawl. Well, he does know how to crawl, but he's trying to learn how to walk. But one of the things we do as soon as he gets home, you know, we get, he gets excited, I get excited, you know, I get put my stuff down, put it on the floor, and we have a game of catching if you can. So, you know, he thinks he's just crawling so super fast. He has to stop sometimes and look back to see where I am. But I just follow him, and it's just, those few minutes of us playing basic tag um, just bring such a joy into his life. No different than my six-year-old or even with our 23-year-old, what we sit and talk about today or talk about issues. We need to, you know, you know, how, you know how they say, don't sweat the small stuff. As parents, I believe we need to sweat the small stuff. And what I mean by that is the little things with being there, you know, more so than not. Um, taking that extra when you're tired, not just, you know, on a birthday party, not you going all out because you want to see, you know, you want everybody to see that you love your kid. No, don't do it then. Do it every day. Take mm -hmm. that time, you know, structure some time um, so you can have a point in, in, in your kid's life. It can get away from us. Life has it and it can get away from us, but we need to make sure that we invest in them. Um, and not just, you know, the babysitter or the school or whatever. We need to do that. That is our responsibility. And I think sometimes people um, forget that because they let life get in the way. And we let Disney, we let Nickelodeon um, raise Cartoon Network, raise our children. Um, and just little simplest things is reading to our children at night. Mm. before they go to bed sometimes we can't wait to get them upstairs and so we can have that peace and quiet time well how about you spend five minutes read to your baby mm. you know it's the little things take take the you know responsibility um respect it and, and do the little things and you will find out in life how big they are my daughter came back one day and told me but she she um <laughs> 
I am a lecturer <laughs> uh, when somebody gets in trouble. Um, but she did laughingly tell me how sometimes they helped. But I just wanted to take the time to show what was right, what was wrong, and then give some experiences. So they don't always work. But to hear that from her just, you know, reconfirms that when you do spend time, they notice. They want that. And they yearn from that from the parents. So parents, be parents. <laughs> yes. Is, you know, message be parents i remember my daughter uh run and i was trying to teach her how to keep her lights turned off to help because we were paying the light bill and it never worked it just never worked and <laughs> you know being a teenage girl and then you know she she'd catch herself most of the time but not I still missed it sometimes and then she got to her first apartment with a roommate and she would say to me dad my roommate will never turn off her lights and our bill keeps going up i said really Hmm. I remember there was a girl in our house that did the same thing. And she said, oh, you didn't have to bring that up. Well, that's the thing is that we try to teach her, you know, and we keep on trying our very best. So, Ariel, you got anything else for Darren before we let him go? Yeah, I have a daughter who loves the light switches as well. She can reach the light switches now. So. Oh, no. <laughs> So you're always wondering, he's like, oh, did I leave that porch light on for some reason? The dogs are out there looking at him going, oh, are we getting fed now? And, hey, we all go through that. But, you know, I want to basically wrap this up and just tell Darren, you know, thank you so much for having you here today and being with us and sharing your message. And we would like to see you come back on the Straight Talk with Parents. Absolutely. Sometimes we'll absolutely get in contact with you for that. But, however... I just want to say absolutely from my heart, thank you so much for being here today and sharing that with us. I, I don't know about anyone else, but I've learned so much, and thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ariel. And Glenda, thank you on your end for monitoring it. And we just had a Periscope comment, Darren, just by the way, from an adult. She said she still sleeps with the light on in the hallway. So, you know. <laughs> sometimes we just have to keep on doing it right but you know what guys we just appreciate uh you coming in darren i appreciate uh coming together tonight uh we've all had some kind of issues of trying to bring it together but we did wrap it up it is time to close out our class darren any final thoughts i, I just i just want to thank you for this great opportunity i really appreciate this dr keith um you have been an example and what the things that you've done um and I've just seen that only via Periscope. So I know that only scratches the surface of what you all are going to do. Ariel, it was such a pleasure. I do want to make it down under, uh, just like Dr. Keith did. I have a, I have a namesake, uh, Darren W. Carter in, um, in, in Australia that I have, we have planned at some point <laughs> to meet in life. So this was a great honor and, pri and privilege for me and I thank you and anytime um, you ask, I will be there. I appreciate well, it. Thank you so much. You. Thank you. Ariel, I'm sorry. Go ahead and respond. I said we love to have you, uh, always. Thank you. Well, folks, this is Dr. Keith with Dads for Life. I want to thank my, my guest, first of all, Darren W. Carter, for coming in with the uh, his website, you can find him at DarrenWCarter.com. You can, if you're living in the Cleveland area, you can reach out to him for Cleveland Dads area uh, for the, the program there. Also has a Facebook page. He's on Periscope. I see him there from time to time. And then we also, uh, you know, he and I are going to be doing some uh, collaborating together out there in, in California in a couple of months. Uh, dads for Life, Bring You Up to Speed, is working on a brand new course for dads. Uh, and we're also working on a new Zoom course for dads who are divorced. So um, this has been a fruitful trip for me here in the UK, and I'm very, very appreciative of it. I'm very surprised at some of the response that we've had because it has been overwhelming. So uh, I look forward to sharing that with our audience in the near future. So uh, Darren, Ariel, Glenda, thank you very much. All the ones that are watching on Periscope and Live, I see that we have – we have had up to 40 uh, viewers live watching us throughout the whole program, and that will extend as we continue to repurpose this particular uh, webcast. So, everyone, have a blessed and wonderful day, and we will talk to you next time right here on Straight Talk from Dads for Life. We'll see everybody later. All right. Thanks, Darren. Bye, buddy. Thank you. Thank you.